What would you do with this space? My goal is to turn this cold and boring space into a cozy and inviting nook by bringing the outside in like one big open space. My glue gun is already heated. Now, the way I did it was, in my other video was I take my fabric and I bring it up to the edge of the board once and I fold it over twice. A second time, I should say. And then I use my glue gun to pin it down. And I always start from the center to pin it down and then I take the rest and continue towards the side. Okay. Just like that. I use, I be, like I said, I, I begin at the center and I use it as my anchor and I continue on. Okay. So I'm pretty much finished the whole thing. Just have to do the ends. Now the thing is, I just want to tell you that because this is so long and it is a bit tedious when you're actually doing it, so what I did to make my life a little easier was I actually, instead of putting the glue gun little bits at a time, what I did was I would put some here and maybe some there and then some there. And then, as I finish the whole thing, then I would just go in with my glue gun in between the areas that I didn't do to fill it in and finish it that way. So that it wasn't so tedious that way, because it's quite a long space to do. Also, I just want to say that I used, uh, I didn't say it before, but I used tape, masking tape. Because I had to put two pieces on together. Because the foam board that I use is 30 by 20. So I had to cut it across, along the, the long end to get my my five feet okay so that's that's what I had to do so I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna do the ends and then we'll take it from there so this is what we have so far not finished yet but we soon will be but this is what we have so far so they're about five feet each Yep, they're five feet exactly each. So we're going to work on them. I'm going to finish it. See, right around here is dirty. Right around the ear, right around the uh, the edges. And that's because I had a padding right around here, a small one that didn't cover the whole chair. And that's the reason why the outer edges are dirty. So, you know, with any kind of organizing, with any kind of decorating, you've got to clean first. There's no doubt about that. Like, I mean, there's no getting around it. You've got to clean first. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. I'll be using Javix, equal parts Javix, equal parts water. And I'm going to be using a white cloth because when you use bleach, it changes the color of the fabric. So you might as well just use white. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna clean up now. Okay, it's pretty dirty, isn't it? Don't forget to use gloves when you're doing this. So it's very simple. You're just gonna give a nice cleaning. You're just gonna scrub. Javix works wonders, uh, or well, bleach anyway. So you're just going to clean it like that. You can already see it's starting to clean it up, take up all the dirty spots. It's been sitting there for a good while actually because my grandkids sit on it all the time and they spill all sorts of things on it. I'm surprised this isn't very messier. But mind you, I did have a little pad on it, a chair pad from the floor, so that helped keep it clean. So you can see it's starting already to clean it up. I 
I, I use this also for like if I have a spill on the carpet, get a clean white cloth, of course, I don't know why I'm saying clean, but you get a white cloth and you just dab at it, but you, of course you have to dilute it with water, it reaches very strong, as we all know. So all you have to do then is uh, let it dry, let it dry for a while. Don't get to wear your gloves, okay? So I'm gonna leave it to dry, and then we'll see what it looks like. So while the chairs are drying, I can finish up my seat cushions. I am using buttons to attach the straps, which I made extra long, so that I can weave them in between the chair rails to secure the cushions. I prefer the buttons rather than sewing the straps directly into the fabric. This will be my only embellishment. This type of fabric is very bright with large floral prints. So if you use this type of fabric, try to keep your embellishments to a minimum. Uh, I'm making a side panel for the window between the window frame and the sliding door at the very corner. So I'm just cutting out this quilt batting. And it's just going to go on top of this like that. It's about the right size. Okay, it's the right size. And I am going to, once again, lay it down and adhere it with my trusty hot glue. Now I am going to, when I, when I glue it down, I am going to leave a little edge. I'm just going to wrap it around like this. Like that. So I'm going to do it. Okay. So I'm just going to down the glue just like so just like so and I'm just going to continue all the way down like that okay so I'm just going to continue okay so I'm just finishing up now with the second side panel Almost done. So what I'm doing is what I did was I just placed hot glue at distance at a distance and then now I'm just going to fill in the gaps, pull it through so that it is tight. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go back and forth on each side and pull it through. Okay, so this is the side panel placed securely between the window frame and the wall. It's a very small space as you can see. Okay, so all the chairs are cleaned and they're dried now. So this is about uh, over five hours later and they're, they've all been cleaned and look how clean they are now. No more spots. And this is from just water and bleach. Okay, nice and clean. Nice and clean. All four chairs are nice and clean. Water and bleach. Okay, so I have pretty chaotic here so far. I will definitely be cleaning up this chaos. Oh, what a mess. Both strap ends are weaved in and out of the rails, meeting in the middle and then tied in a loose knot. As well as a seat cushion, this cushion can be lifted when sitting to act as a nice, comfortable, soft backrest. 
It feels absolutely divine as you lean back. You can even create a nice circular tablecloth centerpiece and place a nice bouquet of flowers or whatever you want in the center. I just had some nice little uh, fern that I put there. The tablecloth, the circular tablecloth, is made with um, cotton quilt, quilt batting and the cushions here are made with polyester stuffing. Okay. With your scrap fabric, you can create nice little tie backs like this, nice curtain tie backs with combination jump ring, string, and fabric. Okay, so I will allow the end result to speak for itself. I feel that I've achieved my goal, but comment please, drop a quick comment and let me know what you would have done. If you like it, you don't like it, but yes, please drop a comment and tell me what you would have done differently. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and thanks in advance for watching. This here is a was a picture frame that I was going to throw away and thought not, thought against it. And I decided to just add fabric to it with the quilt batting and I came up with this. So I guess this is what they call a creative reuse or upcycling. Okay, so that's it. So, you know, there's so many things you can do. You don't have to throw everything out. Just try and be creative. Here is a valence that goes above the blinds. And what I did was I just quickly um, inserted a, a quilt padding and used the same material. And uh, I just put it in. I used, I sewed it up of course, and then I used hot glue to install it. I use hot glue for everything. <laughs> just comes in handy. So it's the same as this one here. Just like that, it's the valence right here. It goes above the blinds, right? So I just took it and just wanted to do a little bit of a, something interesting on it, give it some color. So this is what it looks like. This is what the valence looks like. Just a little small little one here. And I just um, made the fabric and I stuffed it with quilt batting, sewed it together, and then used my glue gun to kind of just put it in between this little area here. Okay.